Thank you, Mr. Bularoski. Good morning, brethren. Good morning. Let me get something up. If you would, I'll go ahead and give you a title this morning. It's called Growing Faith to Move Mountains. It's Growing Faith to Move Mountains. See, if you would, let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and turn to 1 Timothy 6. We'll get there in a minute. That word faith, we all know the definition. You know, it's the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. But, does this word have any significance in our growth in God's family? If it's something needed to please God and something Christ will be looking for upon His return, then is it just automatically given to those He wants to have it? Those questions are ones we already know the answers to. Questions we need to focus on in our lives are thing, what are the things we can do to help grow our faith? Also, on the other hand, what are things that we can do that can cause our faith to diminish? It's an important area in our lives that needs to be evaluated daily, especially as we start to see times changing. Because we're told in Matthew 24, we warn that the world is deteriorating. Things will begin to happen, and if it's not careful, these events can and will test our faith. Now, that's my phone going off. I apologize. <laughs> what I mean, these events are going to be so evil that it would change the culture of the world we know. And if it's not careful, it can get so evil that the love of many brethren can wax cold. So what I mean when I say culture change is the modification of a society which can come through inventions, discoveries, but in this case, modification due to the extent of wars and disasters. We've all had a small taste of this culture change here recently when we experienced this COVID pandemic. But now as we're starting to move into a post-pandemic era of the world, we step back, you know, we can easily see change. We can see things have started to become difficult. And if we look, it's hard to get used to. Can these changes induced into our lives affect our faith? And if they can, have they already affected us and blinded us to the point of causing our faith to be diminished? We actually start here in 1 Timothy, but if you remember in both letters to Timothy, he was being warned of this very thing, how life changes can affect you through worldly living. And it can affect our spiritual growth. So here in chapter 6, this is how he was instructed to deal with it. Let's read 1 Timothy 6, verses 11 and 12. 1 Timothy 6, verses 11 and 12. But you, O man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you are also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And in verse 12 he said fight. It's not chalking life up and cha of changes in life up to just prophecy being fulfilled. It's all in God's hands. Therefore we just keep moving aimlessly. He's being reminded that we are called to be a part of God's work. Not to become idle in minds and deeds. And this is how the love of many will wax cold. Becoming unchanged in these events and their minds become dull to what's going on around them. So with the time remaining, let's look quickly at the importance of faith and growing it during these changes in life. So let's begin with the word we mentioned with culture. And how does changing culture affect faith? Now we all know what culture is. It's the customs the arts, the social instruction, institutions, and achievements of a particular nation, people, or other social group. And when we look at culture as it refers to man, it includes man's entirety. It's not just man on his own, because culture is the total shared and learned behaviors of a society or subgroup. Neither does culture refer to a man's inward spiritual nature alone as well. Why? Because culture is not fixed on a particular time. It's historically transmitted patterns. It's God's way because God does not change. God's way is the same yesterday, 
today and tomorrow and throughout history for his people in different societies he's used it to build and grow in the advancements of their knowledge toward his way of their life that he desires them to have but basically in a nutshell it's God's communicating and development of our attitudes so we understand so we grow in faith and it's a requirement that he wants us to have so we can see through these continual changes in our lives for example, one of the greatest examples in the book is the book of Daniel. This is a recording of many, many different cultural changes. For example, his captivity through to a whole different country, all the way to living under many different rulers. It was a great example how his faith grew and his trust in God was strengthened. He was even blessed to see a, a future event that would change the way the whole world would live. A massive global culture change. But he didn't understand it. What he saw wasn't for him. It was for a different time of people far in the future. So now let's add that little faith factor we mentioned, what we began with. With these changes in our lives, become many, they come many obstacles that could affect our faith, both in a good way and a bad way. Christ often referred to these obstacles as, that are placed by our adversary as mountains many mountains in our past, things that we can't see around. Christ explained to his disciples that it requires one thing to move these mountains. Faith. Christ even explained the size he wanted. He used the reference of a mustard seed. I know many people, you can't see this, but this is what he was re referencing. A mustard seed. And we know from there with proper care that little bitty seed and cultivation, this seed can grow and produce much more food than what its size would lead you to believe. Face the same way. It's either made strong and overcoming and grows to produce the fruit needed to strengthen one's life or it dies off with opposition and leaves one in need. So many mountains have been placed in our lives over the past year. I believe we can count them. We can go around the room and just talk about numerous mountains that's been placed in our lives. Our adversary may have put a major mountain in our past, but the good side of the situation is it has allowed us to grow, grow in our faith. And I'm talking about the blessings of an advancement of technology and our communication abilities that we have in our society has allowed us to assemble. It's not only, this is not only a time in history where God's people face changes. You know, we can read this book and we can see many changes throughout all through ancient Israel. And today we can use them to help guide us to get through where we are now. Now we was talking about the communication aspect. When man actions caused us to quarantine, what did God provide? Zoom webcast and there's many others to get my point well, let's turn to isaiah 43. what well, do god want us to learn from this he said when man's actions did cause us to quarantine god made a way just as he did many times in the past with ancient israel he's allowed us to remain strong it allowed us to continue to grow during this pandemic. And here in Isaiah, we, we're going to read where God was pleading with Israel to remember. Ancient Israel had been moving forward through many different ways of life, amongst many obstacles, many mountains that was placed before them. And God provided a way. But it required obedience through trust and faith. And in Isaiah 43, let's read verses 1 and 2. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and you who formed you, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed you, I have called you by your name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Let's drop down to verse 18. He's telling not looking back. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old, things that you came from. Behold, I will do a new thing. 
Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. You will know it by faith and see the blessings of my hand overcoming the adversary's plan. Why is it important for us to see these blessings? Why is it important to remember where we come from? Why? Because faith is action. It requires action and it must be cultivated. It must be tended to. And our Father knows that. That's why He's reminding us that He is there providing. He will be the one that provides. Turn to Him. And that was the part, what we talked about, the good part of the communication abilities. He provided a way for us to maintain our togetherness. Following God. It's by putting our trust in Him and cultivating that faith. But we know that things always don't remain the same. When these things again begin to change and we begin to look kind of some sort of, of normalcy, are we to stay happy where we are? Are we to be happy at the point where God brought us? Or do we need to be looking forward to changes again? When making that decision, there's one point that we have to remember. There is another strong force out there that is always looking to take what God meant for good and turn it into a crutch for those who are not paying attention. That's the bad side of communication technology. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it's not good for everybody. It's put there for those that it is in need. Those that can't, don't have the ability to move forward. But for us, those that have the ability, it will become a crutch in our life, causing our faith to diminish. And let's look at the bad side of it. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3, we're not going to turn there, but the writer gives advice on different many times in our life, what we should do. In verse 6, he makes a statement. There is a time to keep, but there also is a time to throw away. Why in the world would we want to throw away a blessing? This far advancements of, of getting together, why would we need to get rid of that? The answer is easy, complacency. Becoming complacent and fearing another change can cause us not to see the blessings that are in front of us because our minds are always focused in what's behind. In turn, diminishing our faith and our halting our progression in our spiritual lives. We're not all called to be idle. We are called not called to be satisfied with the present. You know, can't be God got me here. No, I'm good with it. I'll just sit here in the seat and be happy. Let's turn to Philippians 3. Let's look at see how an example of the Apostle Paul not being complacent or satisfied with his life as well. Philippians 3, and let's read verses 12 through 14. Paul stated, not that I have already obtained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has laid hold of on me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting these things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Our use and growth of faith is a very important part and, and a requirement of our conversion and our continued growth in the family of God. It's something that we do not need to take lightly. And just like Christ used the example of the mustard seed, you know, it can start very small, but it can grow toward this easily, many aspects of faith in our life cultivated and ready to be used where God needs but if not cultivated and we come complacent then we can turn to this empty and we can easily end up there if we're not careful so for a final scripture brother let's turn to Hebrews 10 Hebrews 10 and we'll end on this few verses Hebrews 10 and verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. 
But recall the former days in which, after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with suffering. Let's drop down to verse 35. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence. Don't cast away this faith, this process in which I have built. Latch on to it. Do not cast away your confidence which has great reward. For you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise.